Hey guys, it's been a while, hasn't it? Um, I'm back to teaching at a school right now. It's a brand new school, so it's everybody's learning everything. It's my second semester there. It's quite interesting to see something new come up, though. Um, lots of little glitches, but I think it's going to do well once it once it settles in. And it's like anything brand new. You know, you open up a salon, it's a little bit glitchy. What do we need to do to, to make it better? And um, anyways, it's kind of kind of cool to be in the midst of that and all. But uh, what I want to teach today, which is, I've always kind of gone into this with you guys, is color. And I know that this is more of a theory class, so don't turn it off. Just pay attention. Just, you know, if you want to do something else, but hear it, then hear it. But um, so often, with color, uh, we are not taught. We're taught to depend on, on the product, depend on the color wheel, determine the client by the product. But level of deposit and level of lift are different for everyone. I keep thinking, you know, sometimes I think, uh, let's do some color. But then, your color, your, your screen probably sees different tones in these two colors that I did. I did two tones of color on this. This is softer. This is a little, got a little bit more violet to it. But you can't tell because of the screen. So it makes it difficult for me to say we are exactly here. So you knowing what happens with color becomes extreme. This is a whole bunch of stuff. So let's review a little bit. The first color to happen, we all know, was white. And what is it identified as a non-color? It doesn't have pigment, but it does. If it didn't, then it wouldn't be able to turn my coffee lighter brown. If it didn't, then there wouldn't be white lightener out there to lift off color. And it's not just the developer that does it. Yes, it's a chemical, there's oxidation, but why did they use the color white? Why then did they replace it with the color blue? Why then did they replace it with the color violet? Because those colors go back to what white is all about. That's where it all started. So from white came the first primary color, yellow, that grabs and lets go. You see, it's still very common to see these um, people walking around with the pink hair, the green hair. I mean, I had some clients come in the other day. One of my students uh, gave, uh, gave, he gave a haircut to a, one of his cousins. And I have never seen so many multitudes of colors. But this is what they're, you know, they, they were so comfortable wearing it. And uh, I thought it was great. But anyways, in, 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 uh, in teaching them the cut, I'm not going to go into hair cutting right now, but uh, I will later on to show you how to take it and make it look like you can't see any hard lines. It just fits. All right, so anyways, we had to do that because all those different colors really vibrated that. But yeah, they were all faded because they took it to yellow. Yellow grabs and lets go. Red grabs and holds on. We have to know how to make red to change it to become a hair color. Even in the lightest form, we have to do that. So red grows up to become stronger, red grows up to become blue. Blue guards and protects. But as soon as the heat comes on, as soon as we go swimming and don't shampoo, even if you do shampoo, chlorinated water removes that color, especially more on the ends than at the scalp. So once that happens, the blue is the first to go. The strength in the hair is on what's underneath. And if there's not enough red pigment, of course texture, density, all of that has to do with it. Texture is how fat the hair is. You know, is it, do you have fine hair? Do you have medium hair? Do you have coarse hair? And a lot of that has to do with, you know, genetics as well. But it doesn't mean that somebody with fine hair can't have hair halfway down their back either. That goes back to pigment and... You know, look at the color of the eyes. Do they have freckles? Is the dark hair on the arms that... And by the way, that one uh, student, her cousin, his cousin, um, had uh, freckles and you could see the dark hair and brown eyes. 
So that's one reason that hair was staying on the head. That is overall pigment strength that's hidden. We as cosmetologists tend just to look at this. And that is not the only factor. So anyways, what I did here, I lifted this with a, uh, a lightener. And I uh, just put it on just like a regular lightener and stuff. There's still, you can see some of this other color moving over and whatever. And some of this falling in. But I'm going to lift this up right here so you can get a better view of it. And so you can kind of see where it came up. Now we know that mannequin hair has already been chemically treated. We don't know with what. So we're dependent on our own knowledge of color. What we tend to do when we're going to do color, and once you get really busy, I mean in the past I'll, you know, when I've got five clients waiting, I don't have time to go to the color wheel. I better know what I'm going to be doing. I better know my product. I better know what's inside that tube or inside that bottle before I apply it to this. So this particular, this mannequin lifted up to what you would call, what is that? She's got some yellow, uh, which you see. Now that, again, depends on how you see it on your screen. So that's what makes it difficult. This looks almost, she's got some strings of yellow and then she's got some strings of yellow gold in there. Uh, let me go further down. I don't think it matters because the nape line is the same as the top. But you can see some of that yellow gold as I cross it over. Um, so yellow gold, where are we on the client? Yellow gold, right here. On the client, that means that she's got four levels of deposit in there. That's where it took it. That's how much she's got in it. We never stop to think of what she's got in it, all right? So she's got yellow gold. We're kind of safe on application because gold has what? Yellow and red. Red says what? Grabs and holds on. All right. On the product, we have nine levels of lift. Yellow gold. So uh, it makes it difficult to see. But then what do we do? What do we replace? And again, the biggest factor there, what does she want? What is... He wants, she wants, whatever. Everybody's getting their hair colored anymore. All right, so let's move over here. This hair color on this side was a high lift tint. I'm going to try and separate it as much as I can. I know you're seeing some of the brown in there. But you can see that the high lift tint lifted a lot more. We see a lot more gold in there within that definitely see a lot more gold. So now we have color combinations because we lifted with a high lift tint. The lightener lightens all the colors. Oh, by the way, on this, I mix my blue lightener and my violet lightener. Mix them together. So now I have a blue violet that's going to get rid of what? Yellow gold. Violet and yellow, blue and orange. They don't only make brown, they make white. All right, in the lightest form. If you know that on the top of your head, then you're not guessing anymore or guesstimating. You're doing it. You're getting it. Uh, you've got to know your product. It's one thing to know color, but you've got to know your product as well. So you can see that that was, you know, much lighter. And uh, you can kind of see the variable there, where it's the high lift. Uh, some of this hair is traveling over, but still. And it may look kind of the same, but it's not. There was two colors. One was a lightener. One was high lift. So when I did this, this is definitely more of a true gold. So what have we got? We've gone from client gold to red gold because there's some warmth in there. So now we know that we have five to six levels of deposit in there. It's already there. But we also have seven to eight levels of lift, color that has been removed, however, with color. So that's the main thing that we need to be aware of in this. So when we're going to put it back, it's going to be much simpler to replace this to make it dark again than this. Because the lighter the color, the more pigment that's gone. A little bit darker, we left some in there. Like I said, we've left some red in there. 
I know what you guys are saying. I want to see her take it to platinum. I will when we do our next one. Both of these will go to platinum and I will show you how to do it. Then we'll take it back to this color. Now, let's get real. I take this to platinum. What do I have to do? I better know what I'm using, right? On the lightener, I don't intend to lighten anymore. I want to show you how to do that. She may be a little beigey, but let's get it up there as far as we can. The other one we may need to lighten a little bit because it was done with color. Color deposits onto color. Lightener just lifts like we do when we lighten our coffee. Okay, on these colors I use two shades, just deposit only color, and I just wanted to create some warmth. I used a level 7 on both of them and it's amazing to me it did not too much. I did use 20 volume. Surprisingly it didn't do much. Why? It has color in it. You combine color with color. I used a 7 ash. What is ash? There's three shades of ash. Blue, violet, and green. Okay, at a level 7 color, we're right here. All right? So if that was green, red and green, make brown, brown. Do you see what happened? It added color and then combined to create. And therefore, there was minimal lift that happened. If I didn't know that, then I would be what? Guessing again. So you've got to know what creates color. I'm gonna move her aside a bit. Because I know this is a conglomerated, like, what does she have there? See the shades of brown, violet and yellow, red and green, blue and orange. That's what creates yellow. Then you get to the tertiary colors, red-orange. Okay, what's red-orange? Okay, so blue-green would take care of that. Blue and orange. Red and green, make it brown. It's nice to have a color wheel to go look at. And the color wheels usually have a bunch of circles on them and then it gives you the levels of color and then what's going to, and I hate to use this word, cancel. You're creating color. You're not canceling anything. Canceling says it went away. It did not. You had a result. And sometimes that's what takes us to an area of fear because what do we do with this? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up the client first. Just separate this for you. And uh, actually what I'm going to do too... Let me take this off, because all that's going to do is take your eyes off of it. I have to wet my board because I wrote this yesterday, and uh, so I'm going to take that off. Let me get my towel here. Sorry, you guys. Oh. Yeah, those things happen. Okay, so let's take this off. All right, and I'm also going to take the other one off, product. So I don't want your eyes going anywhere. They don't need to go. I want you to get this. Color is, that's where the market is, especially now. And then since we're going to be correcting color, unless they're using splat from Sally's, that's got a plastic coating that it leaves on the hair. And uh, you're not going to penetrate that. It just has to grow out. I mean, I'd like to see somebody penetrate that. Uh, even if it fades out, it's coated that cuticle. It didn't go in. If it goes into the cortex, more power to you. All right. So oh, that's the client. Product. You notice that it's 12. is 12 levels of lift. But if you don't know what the lift is, how do you know what you're lifting? Uh, again, this is product. You've got to know your product. Let's take a look at this. I have a product here. I love it. I can't find it anymore. They don't make it anymore, and I hate it when they do that. It's called 100V. What the heck does that mean? If you look at it, you go, 100V? Oh, my God. That's got to be 100 levels of lift. No, it isn't. It's actually only about 10 levels of lift and it's a violet base. So when you've taken them up to yellow, what's going to make them white? Violet. Yellow and then red and blue. See, it doesn't change. It's only those three colors. It is three and it is one. 
They all come back to make one. One comes from the other to be the other. So, I mean, be aware of that. So this 100V says, lightest pearl blonde. What in the world? That's my name. I must have created this color. So what does pearl blonde say to you? Does it say, I mean, I've seen some gray pearls. I've seen some white pearls. What does this say? Now, I'm going to share something with you. First time I used this, a client of mine, this has been coming to me for years. I was working at a, a salon and she comes in and she says, can you fix this? I said, yes. This is what I used. However, I had to first <laughs> add a little bit of ash to it, green ash, because her hair was pink. So I added a little bit of green into it. And let's, let's look at that. Uh, let's find my marker. Here it is. So if she was pink, what do you see that as? Red, right? Pink is red. There, I hope you can read that. Oh well, this thing's moving. Oh, dot my eye. I've got another dot up there. Okay, so I used violet and green. All right, so we know that yellow and violet create white. White, yellow, red, and blue in the lightest form. This is the lightest form. We know it's going to do that. What do we have? Residue red. So because of this blue into that, it's going to decrease that area. But because of this combination of green as well into the red, it went platinum, almost white blonde, which is what she wanted. What level was this? A level 12. You have to know what your ash color is. When you don't know what it is, take a piece of white paper, take your color, open it up, and just make a little line. It will oxidize. When it oxidizes, you'll see that what's called undertone. What is that ash color? That is the undertone in it. So it ended up, I had a violet, and I ended up using almost like a blue-green base, but still, it did it. And because it was in the yellow area, it was in the lightest form. So what did it do to that? It lightened it, just like cream does to coffee. It lightened it and then toned it at the same time. Only used a 10 volume developer. I didn't need to lift. I was combining color with color. So knowing this makes a world of difference. Now, do you see this? I went to one of the hardware stores. Okay, so yellow, how does that increase? Do you see the increase in it? The point is, your screen may show it, like I see it here, and it may not. That's the problem with the color pigments within the, the screen itself. So these pigments, this is a very pale yellow. Uh, it's not quite white, but you can see the white next to it. And it starts increasing in color. What does it do? It increases into red. One becomes the other. When, when red fades, it's going to fade to either pink or orange. Yellow and red is orange. Red and white is pink. It's just real. Know where you're at so then you know where you're going. So then as we increase, we've gone from uh, yellow, light yellow, um, yellow gold, gold, red gold, red, Red violet, here we are with the red violet. And then we're going to the red browns and the different shades of brown. And then finally the black, the most pigment. All of these colors fell in to make this. All of these colors are inside this color. What fascinates me most is when I'm wearing something black and then I get lightener on it and it goes right to orange. Every once in a while it'll even go to white or gray, which is kind of fascinating too. But it never ceases to amaze me. This all milks right into that, bleeds into it, because one is the other. This cannot be this without this. So with product, you've got 12 levels of lift to make it white. You're removing color. The point is, are you really removing it or are you combining it? with? Because with product, they say, that's what this is. 
but look at all the different tones. I have a, okay, here's a level five. It says uh, chocolate mocha. Okay, what does chocolate mocha look to you? Okay, it's not this. Didn't come out to be this mannequin color. If I put it to the light, I can almost see it a little bit gold in there. Not so much gold on the light on this side because it's a slightly different tone. And it's that tone of color that you've got to know what it is. Don't just call it tone. Give it a name. If you give it a name and you know color, you know what you need to use to create the color you want. Not to cancel or neutralize, but to create the color that you want. Okay, so what about, um, that was a level five. Here's an interesting one. What about 6AA? What the heck is the AA? You know what it says? Ash, ash. There's three shades of ash. A level six in product is right here. It's red. How can it be ash? What does that tell you? What does that tell your brain? If it's in the area of red, it could be a violet ash because red and blue make ash. Is it a blue violet ash? Because blue is, is an ash color. So see, you knowing this, now let me turn it around to the client And here you go, this is the client, this is the resistance chart. This is what you're faced with. So I'm gonna take this 6AA and I'm gonna put it, the client is what, what did we say she was? Right here, red gold. So it's got two areas of red and one area of yellow. This darn well better be blue green ash. Two areas of red. We want to go to a level six brown. You see what I'm saying? So know what you've got. Know what's in front of you. Stop guessing, but start knowing. That makes you a colorist. That makes you. That makes it just come up for you right away. So the 6AA, we'd have to take it and see what, you know, put it on a sheet, see what colors come up. But I would say 6AA, it's either blue violet or blue green. And because it's in the red area of level six, I would almost venture to say it's blue-green. And see, I love doing these labs. These are labs for you guys to do with your color product. Write it down, for goodness sake. You remember it. It travels up your arm, over your shoulder, into your brain, and you remember it. Um, okay, let's look at this one. This is 6RB. It just says red-brown. What tone of red? Is it the right tone of red? Do we have the right red? Okay, it's already with the client and resistance a level six is already red gold so with product this is red brown we're put it into a red gold what toner we're going to have definitely red okay so it's things like this that you need to know to be able to move forward with color know what your product is and and i love this one i love this one this is a deep copper level four Okay, with client, a level four, they are in the area of brown. One, two, three, four. Okay, let me turn this back around so you see it on product. A level four is blue, brown, or just brown, I'm sorry. It's that first solid area of blue. So they're saying that they're going to put a deep copper into that. So what shade really is that copper? That's kind of tough because blue and orange make brown. So if blue and orange make brown, what have we added to make this copper? Yes, gold. Possibly more a red gold to increase that area of red into it. So all of these are factors as far as what you're doing. Now, here's another thing that I want to show you. I want to talk to you about the tertiary colors. The tertiary colors are the increased pigment that you're going to see in color. The increased pigment, of course, a tertiary color, third level color, we go primary yellow, red, and blue, secondary, orange, green, and violet, and then we take a primary and a secondary, add them both together, so see, it goes back to number one. You add them together to create so yellow green so the green is yellow plus blue so you have two yellows in there what does yellow create when you mix it 
not cancel, not neutralize, what do you create when you mix it? What about blue-green? Two areas of blue. What does it do? Blue-green, if you want to get brown, you want to get it, put it in with gold, yellow-gold. So um, <laughs> that's another area of yellow then, because we have two blues and then we'd have two yellows, so possibly just be a solid brown. But it's you knowing the results of it, and where are you on that? I mean, how light and dark are these for you to know? Browns are created created by combining across the color wheel yellow and violet and you're going to get brown. Red and green, there's yellow and blue. See, all three primaries, all three primaries on the color white, all three primaries on the color black, all three primaries in the darkest form. It's just three colors and they all come from one and they are one, just lighter or darker. That's all increased pigment so gray is again we've talked about that you got to know how to make gray if somebody can make gray especially now with all the gray formulas i did somebody's hair the other day uh, one of my clients and um it was it was a level one black and we lightened her to yellow and um it was fascinating and you know you got to watch these clients on medication as well she was on she had been sick and she was on some kind of meds and uh, at back at the nape on one side, I kept putting that toner on, putting it on, it stayed yellow. And she was just glad because the rest of it covered it up, went to pure white. But we took her to yellow. And then we, we combined a pearl, which is a, you know, kind of, it's a, it was a little bit of a blue base color. Um, I forget, two other colors, a violet. So therefore blue violet gets rid of what? Yellow gold. So, and yeah, she went right to pure white, but the thing that was fascinating to me before we took it out, it was very gray, but hair is always darker uh, wet than it is dry. And I was thinking, oh man, she's gonna come out gray, she ain't gonna come out white, but she did. So, and you always talk to your client, you know, while you're doing that, because we don't know. So, uh, cameraman, how much time do we have? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half minutes, okay. So, in covering all of this, you guys, Write it down, you know, look at it, decipher what you're combining together. And then when you go to the color wheel, this is all again going to make sense to you, for God's sake. We go across, right? Red and green. Oh, I want to cancel that. Don't cancel it, create it. Yellow and violet. Blue and orange. And then what? Red violet. Blue violet. Blue green. Yellow green yellow orange red orange all of it's there in that one circle but if you don't know what you're combining how in the world are you going to know what you're creating so look at your client if they have brown eyes freckles dark hair on their arms honey you got they're resistant especially now let's go back coarse hair yeah they're resistant look at the color and give it a name label it a color. I hope this has kind of helped you a little bit. This is review, this is color, uh, this is a lot of it for my students. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to say a lot of them do follow me and I appreciate that. I don't do my videos at the school, that's a conflict of interest, but I do know that some of them follow me, so I hope they get it. But knowing this makes you a colorist. You still have to learn your product. What is it going to do? And then, of course, know your hair texture. Do hair strands. Ask your client, can I just take a bit of your hair? And write it down, for goodness sake. Take care. God bless. We'll see you again with the platinum color.